Hickok 45 here. You don't mind if I shoot my Colt single action, do you? Didn't think you would. Because you know how much I like it. <laughs> Oops, someone put a bucket of water right there. <laughs> Look at that. Yee doggies. Click. Yeah. Ah, Colt single action. You know I like them. Let's take it back up to the table and talk about powder, black powder versus smokeless powder, okay? We appreciate you watching, appreciate you being here. And this is just gonna be a little demonstration that we've not really done and shown you the difference, I think, in what shooting black powder entails with versus smokeless when it comes to cartridges, okay? At least not side by side. And you've seen me shoot a lot of black powder if you've been around long muzzle loaders, and even in, in these. Uh, what I hadn't shown you was really the difference, like this, this firearm, I'll empty it, or take the cases out, of course, and, you know, there's really no problem at all. It's, uh, and you look at the cases, all right? They've got a little black soot on them, but it's nothing, nothing serious. I lay those over there, and actually I'm gonna load six more, or five more, Man, we load five. If you don't know why, find our video. Should should you load five or should you load six, I think it's called. And we demonstrate that quite vividly why you do this. Okay, I'm going to shoot six more. Or five more. <laughs> Look at those pots. Click. Oh, oh, there he goes. I'm going to get him. Okay, he got him on the run. Oh, let's get this. Wee dog is. A stop sign. Yeah, right in the center. I believe that was five. Let's see if it was. So I'll take these out. And I know you wonder what I'm doing. Okay, they're a little sooty, but not a big deal. Put those right there. Look at the firearm. It, uh, you know, it's very clear, you know, just fine. And your chambers, of course, have a little bit of soot in them. But, uh, you know, it no problem at all. You know, it's just as clean and and free to spin as it uh, ever would be there. I could shoot probably, well, I could shoot hundreds of rounds with no problem. All right, it's good. That's smokeless powder. That's modern powder, modern ammunition from Federal, by the way. <laughs> Appreciate that. This is a 225 grain jacket at soft point. It's the kind of their, their staple American Eagle load. Okay. Now let's shoot this old war horse. I don't know if it's a war horse or not, but you've seen it, I hope. This is the Frontier Six Shooter made in, uh, let's see, it was in 1887, I almost have to remind myself. Someone put a coin there, quarter, for, is that a quarter or a dime? Quarter, I believe, from 1886. I don't know why they did that, because the, the serial number dates this particular uh, revolver to 1887. So, let's load it with what we have to load it with. What is that? Yep, black powder cartridges because this was made back in the black powder era and you should only shoot black powder in it, okay? Now black powder, uh, if you're brand new to firearms, I'll a little bit touch on that. It black, it's not the color is what we're talking about. It was just called, we call it black powder. It's, it's old powder. Back in the 1870s or 1850s or 40s or whenever in the 19th century, You'll catch them in a Western occasionally saying, yeah, there's a keg of black powder over there. It's funny. What do you mean black powder? That, I don't think that was even a term they would have used. It was just gunpowder. It's just that now we have powder that I guess is more gray, you know, so we kind of differentiate called black powder is the old powder. Uh, and uh, newer powder, smokeless powder is a little grayer looking usually. Some of it's blackish looking, but we differentiate by calling it black powder. So I think that's more of a modern term when smokeless powder came about in the 1890s and on up. So, but anyway, you catch them saying that occasionally or labeling a keg with it, which is funny. So this is black. It has different pressure curves and uh, it's not as hard on a revolver. There's not as much pressure. It's a different kind of pressure. And uh, the metal in these old guns is not as strong as the metal in the new guns, okay? So you want to shoot black powder if it was made back, you know, especially before the mid-1890s. So let's shoot a couple of these. Let's just put a couple of these on the target. And then 
<laughs> nice. Look at that smoke. Should be called white powder, shouldn't it? I'll shoot that pot. See if we can smoke a pot with this smoky powder. <laughs> How could you tell? I'm going to shoot that gourd since I'm out of my gourd anyway. Boom. I think I shot five, didn't I? No, I didn't. Okay. I did now. Oh, boy. That is one of the big differences is all that white smoke covering. And it smells so differently. You can smell the sulfur. And if you like black powder, it smells good to you. Okay? If you're sick like I am. So let's put on half cock and run these out. Now these aren't too bad either because uh, in 4440 it seals the chamber better than 45. Uh, people will tell you that. So, but boy, those are dirty inside because that's black powder. Now let's keep those separate. Now look at that cylinder. Uh, moved it on you. Uh, see the the crud already just from six shots. And that stuff. Yeah, I don't want to scratch your gun, but it, it's got the crud starting to build up. And uh, it is cruddy stuff, no doubt about it. Let's shoot six more or five more. Can't get that six out of my mind. Well, it's a six shooter, but you're best to load five. All right, I, so I do it because of habit. It's better to be in the habit of doing that. Even though at the range I could load six. All right, let's shoot something else here. Oh, there's a pot. Oh, I knew that was gonna be a click. <laughs> nice. Let's see, since we got a, uh, an 1887 revolver, let's shoot a cowboy. <laughs> shoot another cowboy. <laughs> see, you can't tell what you're shooting or you can't see the target, you know. I'll shoot that, see if I can hit that bowling pin, and I probably won't be able to tell if I hit it for a second or two. Get the smoke. Wow, look at that cowboy. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the big differences. Of course, black powder versus smokeless is you get a lot of smoke. It's not that modern powder is totally smokeless. It's just by comparison, it is smokeless. Okay, you can see. In the westerns, the ones, the movies, the ones that are realistic, when someone touches off one of these inside a bar room or somewhere, uh, gambling house there should be a lot of smoke can you imagine we've got a little bit of a breeze today if there's no breeze all that would still be hanging hovering out there and uh, inside you can just about imagine you you really if you shot five of those inside a, one of those typically small bar rooms back in the day you would you would not be able to see anything it would just obscure everything so that's one of the big differences and then of course the uh, look what it does to the firearm yeah it really gets it dirty and uh and it is bad it will rust your firearm so you have to clean it you can't just let it lie around for a month like you you could i don't do that with my other guns smokeless uh, firearms but you definitely cannot do that with these okay you'll have problems in fact another difference is if you shoot this several times and just you know lay it over there for a while and then shoot something else the black powder if it hardens up in that barrel it could really affect accuracy because it builds up the residue builds up i've had that happen here i've told that story once with a rifle a fella brought out here shooting black powder and uh we laid over there it was in the sun it was a sunny day and and we got to shooting it again after a while we shooting some other firearms we couldn't hit an animal over there to save our lives and they were going up the hill they're going all over the place and He's a good shot, and, and I knew we'd. I'm gonna get me a loud muffler in my next uh, life, and I'm gonna ride around, and I'm gonna impress the girls. I can't wait to do it, really. But anyway, uh, both of us know how to shoot, and we know how to hold the sights and where the gun was holding. But after we had shot it and let that black powder residue harden in the barrel, we couldn't hit anything. And, and what was funny, it wasn't like always shooting low or high. <laughs> you shoot at the, that ram over there standing, and you might hit one of the red plates. The next shot, you might hit a buffalo down there low right. <laughs> it was really crazy. It was like, it was comedy. But it was because of that residue had built up and hardened. And boy, we had to soak it and soak it to get it out of there. Okay? 
So that was especially a challenge. And, uh, you know, if I had been living in the 1870s and 80s and firing these things very much, I'd have been looking for a creek or somewhere to get some water on that thing, keep that black powder soft, all right? Because that residue gets bad in a hurry. I've told you time and uh, several times, I think, how when I was shooting cowboy action shooting, I shot black powder cartridges, and I'd keep some lube, uh, balance oil, in my bag, and I would just between stages, I would just spray it down. I spray the barrel and I spray in there just to keep it it loose so the firearm would work. And then of course when I got home, I'd give it a very good cleaning, take it apart, and do that, which I'll do with this one. And uh, so I just have two black powder frame. Uh, revolvers I guess and uh, I have to fire black powder in them. One was made in 1884, this one 87, 1887. So there's no other real option. Even though there are some people who take a chance with light loads, experts will advise you against that because it doesn't matter how light the load is, uh, there's a different pressure curve with black powder and that's again one of the differences and that's what this is about. One of the differences is you get a different pressure curve with black powder uh, you still can have, uh, that's the thing, you can have the same velocity. Like I can have a load that gives me, even in 45, gives me exactly the same ballistics with, as, as, as this does, okay? Uh, but yet there's a different pressure curve. So it's not like because this is only good for black powder, uh, I've got to shoot like wimpy, wimpy little loads. That's not it at all. The, the original loads on the 45 Colt, in fact, were, I think it was 40 grains of black powder. Man, that is stiff. I have loaded some of those and shot them in a Colt. And it's a magnum. It really is. Uh, I felt like it was going to shake the gun apart, if not me. And uh, then they, uh, I think they had some problems with soldiers being able to shoot them well, because it was quite a bit of recoil, although it didn't blow up the guns, you know, in the 1870s. And so they reduced it, I think, to 30 grains, 35, 30, 35. And uh, it was a more controllable, you know, round at that phase. So anyway, the point there is you can have the same power. You can have a lot of power and velocity, but with black powder, you just don't have as much pressure to get that. All right. So you, uh, you're not giving up power necessarily, but you want to shoot black powder. I've got to shoot six more since, or five more since I have to clean this thing. <laughs> you see how it's getting so dirty. Yeah, it's a mess. I'll tell you. And when you, you take it apart and start cleaning, oh boy. There's a lot to do there, a lot to do. All right, click. Let's shoot that gourd again. <laughs> uh, see if I can get a plate. Now it shoots high to point of aim, but all right, there we go. See, it knocked that around. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty hard. If you hit it, there you go. I believe it's empty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> plenty of power. Plenty of horsepower uh, in black powder. So I just want to illustrate that again. If you're not familiar with the, the powder, so why would you shoot that stuff? You know, you got all that mess to clean up. What a mess that's going to be. Uh, and you don't see the half of it. Uh, well. It's the way it was, you know, if you really uh, have an interest in history, it's why I shot Frontier Cartridge class when I did cowboy action shooting. Most of the time I shot that, I, uh, I just, if I'm going to do this, I think I'm going to shoot black powder. And I loaded 4570, I loaded shotguns in black powder, I loaded, uh, you know, for my rifle and my handgun, I shot nothing but black powder. And it was a lot of cleanup, but it was cool uh, because it was... I mean, it's, it's the way it would have been. It's a, when Wider was in that shootout at the OK Corral in, what was it, 1884? Was that it? Uh, all those, those guys, that's what you were seeing. That's what you'd have been seeing if you'd have been there. That kind of smoke and uh, that kind of mess, you know, out of the shotgun, the Doc Holliday fired and everything. It was black powder. So they're smokier, it's white smoke. Uh, lower pressure, different pressure curve, less pressure by and large, and uh, a lot more crud that uh, you got to deal with. <laughs> and uh, but beyond that, it is so cool because it is the real stuff. It is the real deal. So anyway, thought you might be interested in that if you weren't aware of it. And uh, I might just shoot this thing a couple thousand more times while you all are. Uh, going off to do 
whatever it is you do you know I'm not really sure what all of you do I keep up with some of you but not all of you so glad you came by appreciate you supporting the people that support us and uh, we'll probably see you again here at the range life is good Hi, welcome to the end of the video. It's nice to have you here. And while you're here, I want to remind you of our friends over at SDI. Go check them out at sdi.edu. You can get certified in gunsmithing and they accept GI Bill and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. So check them out at sdi.edu. Also, uh, some of the new targets you've seen on the range are from shootsomesteel.com. So we appreciate them. And also you may have noticed a uh, pistol safe on the uh, uh, shooting table occasionally and that is the Voltec. Uh, you can check them out at voltecsafe.com and what else have we got? We got our website go to hickok45.com and check out that. You can find all the links to our social media like the Hickok45 Facebook and the real Hickok45 Instagram. Uh, also the Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel. Um, uh, you can also check us out on Full 30. Don't forget to do that. And I guess before I get eaten up by all these mosquitoes, that's all I had to tell you, and I appreciate it.